day, everybody. I'm Menopause Barbie, your Menopause Taylor, Welcome you to my channel where I teach you everything there is to know about menopause. Now, you know that I'm a gynecologist, so I have tons of experience with the medical aspects of menopause and medical options for managing your menopause. But I'm a real nerd, so I study all kinds of things. And one of the things I studied is the alternative and complementary options for managing your menopause. I think of all the options as one big smorgasbord. So I teach you about the dietary, lifestyle, vitamin, mineral, and herbal options for managing your menopause, as well as the medical ones. I may be one of the very few physicians who knows or teaches anything outside of the medical realm, but one of the biggest problems for women is that they hear different things from different kinds of professionals, and the information and solutions offered by the two camps of professionals are often contradictory. The result is that you're left confused. And you often fall through the cracks because you just don't know where to get the help you need. I'm trying to change that. I cover everything about menopause in both the traditional medical and the alternative and complementary camps. And today's video is one of the alternative options for managing your menopause. We are addressing the most important topic in the world of menopause, heart attack. And this is the 17th video on the topic. The first one was video 160, and this is video 176. No matter what, you need to watch them in order. The last few videos have addressed options for managing your menopause in a way that will decrease your risk for a heart attack. And so far, we've covered dietary, lifestyle, vitamin, mineral, and supplement options. So today, we're gonna to talk about the herbal and botanical options. In my book, whether you have the first edition or the second edition, this material is in, ch in chapter 28 in the section entitled Botanical and Herbal Options. All of chapter 28 is on heart attack. If you have a high risk of heart attack or you just want to do everything you can to avoid a high risk of heart attack, you should watch this video because knowing about all your options is key. Now, if you've been watching all my videos, you know that I've been giving you a variety on botanicals and herbs in general. You know that botanicals and herbs are for the purpose of treating your symptoms of menopause, but they are weak. So they don't have the capacity for completely alleviating your symptoms of menopause. I tell you that not to disdain herbal options, but to set your expectations. And when it comes to expectations from herbs with regard to your heart, you need to think about herbs as options to maintain already good heart health. They cannot fix or treat poor heart health. So in general, we don't have much in the herbal category for something as significant as heart attacks. And nothing in the herbal category is as beneficial in reducing your risk as changing your diet and lifestyle or taking estrogen early in your postmenopause. But women's preferences and women's needs are different. There is nothing that is right for all women. The whole idea of this education is for you to learn all the facts and then choose the options that are best for you. And while herbs are not the most efficient way to prevent a heart attack, it turns out that there are a, there's a diamond in the rough, as they say, with regard to one herb. Do you know what that herb is? Test yourself with this quiz question. Which of the following herbs can decrease your risk of a heart attack? A. Black cohosh. B. Dong Kwai. C. Ginkgo biloba. D, Hawthorn. E, Evening Primrose. F, Valerian. G, St. John's Wort. Was that a cinch? Did you say the word cinch when you were a kid? <laughs> it refers to something that's really easy. We used to say it all the time. <laughs> if you've been watching my videos, it was probably a cinch. So here's the question again with the answer in bold. It's Hawthorn. Now, hawthorn isn't an herb with which most people are very familiar. 
And that's a shame because it's one of the few herbs with long-term benefits. I don't know where most people get their information about herbs. I don't think most of them do so in a very academic setting like I do. Most learn things by word of mouth or from advertising. And advertising is not educating. It's marketing. I always say there's a very fine line between ed, which is educating, and ad, which is advertising. The problem is that you don't know where one ends and the other begins. In addition to that, I always say, if there's a product involved, run. <laughs> and that's because nobody with a product to sell you is going to educate you honestly. They're going to hook you with a bit of education and then veer off into advertising that induces you to buy their product. The facts become irrelevant. So much of what people think they know about herbs is largely incorrect. Well, I have no product to sell you and I'll always stick to the facts. I'm all about the education. I'm a nerd, remember? <laughs> so let's talk about Hawthorne. This is what the whole Hawthorne plant looks like. As you can see, it consists of a flowering plant that bears berries. Now, unless you're an herbalist or botanist, you probably won't find it like that. You're more likely to find it like this. This is the raw herb. Because it's not very popular, you might have to search a bit to find it, but you can find it in the form of tea or capsules like this or extract. You might even find it as an ingredient in candied fruit, jams, jellies, or even wine. Of course, the strength and heart attack preventing benefits will vary. And as I taught you way back in video 20 on botanicals and herbs in general, the strongest, purest, and most effective form is the whole plant. Now, the reason Hawthorne can lower your risk for a heart attack is because it does a variety of things that contribute to a lower risk of heart attack, including all of the following. It can lower your blood pressure. It can increase the quantity of blood your heart pumps with each beat. It can lower your cholesterol, your lousy LDL and triglycerides, and it can decrease fat accumulation in your arteries. Now, it's not magic. And it certainly can't do these things to the same extent that a medication can. It's not nearly as strong as any pharmaceutical medication that lowers your risk for a heart attack. But Hawthorne can decrease the necessary dosage of a statin drug that you take to decrease your risk of heart attack. Remember, all herbal products are more like foods than drugs. They only have to meet the regulatory standards for foods. And they do not go any, undergo any scientific studies like drugs do. The claims made on herbal products are geared to reflect the fact that they are not medications. So for Hawthorne, the claim you'll see on the packaging is that it maintains cardiovascular health. So it serves the purpose of keeping your already healthy heart healthy, not correcting an unhealthy heart. But I'm not here to promote one product over another. I'm just here to give you the facts. And I just want you to know that different options have different degrees of benefit. People get into trouble when they try to substitute a drug that can treat a disease with an herb that can only maintain a healthy state. It's not that one is good and the other bad. They just accomplish two different things. Your job is to choose the options whose benefits address your level of risk. So the dosage of Hawthorne is 100 to 250 milligrams three times daily. And the active ingredients are antioxidants by the name of flavonoids or procyanidins. So if you didn't know about Hawthorne before, now you do. Add it to your toolbox if it sounds right for you. There's only one other herbal substance for lowering your risk of heart attack. It's, it's actually, though, a category of products. So while I'm presenting it as 
kind of one category. You're going to find it in many forms. Care to guess what it is? Oh, come on. I've given you a bunch of videos on this. It's the phytoestrogens. I introduced you to phytoestrogens in a series of videos from video 25 through 31. Then I showed you a bunch of herbs that contain phytoestrogens for alleviating symptoms of menopause in video 123. So if you've forgotten, phytoestrogens are plant sources of estrogen. And you've learned that it's the loss of estrogen at menopause that increases your risk for heart attack in the first place. So phytoestrogens can lower your risk of heart attack by providing some estrogen. Of course, it's extremely low, low dosages of estrogen. It's nowhere close to the dosage you get in a pharmaceutical estrogen product. But if you ingest phytoestrogens regularly enough, the benefits can add up. The best benefit of phytoestrogens results from ingesting phytoestrogens with a heart-healthy diet and lifestyle. So, what are some of the phytoestrogens? Well, soy is the most common phytoestrogen. Here's soy yogurt. There's soy everything. There's soy burgers, there's soy cheese, there's soy milk, there's soy everything. We'll use it as an example of how much you can lower your risk of heart attack. If you consume 50 milligrams of soy daily, along with a diet that is low fat, low cholesterol, and high fiber, you can expect a 12% decrease in your cholesterol level and an 11.5% decrease in your lousy LDL level. That is a lot of benefit. I know there's a lot of hype floating around about soy being dangerous, but the people who tell you that obviously don't know about these benefits. And every time I ask one of them why it's dangerous, they never have a single fact to back up their claim. So that is the scoop on soy. There are great benefits and most of the hype is a scare tactic. And then there are a bunch of estrogen containing herbs, including isoflavones, red clover, licorice root, hops, and wild yam. Here, I have isoflavones. Now, you'll find it in all sorts of forms and in a variety of products. This is isoflavone capsules, and this is the tincture. Others have isoflavones as one of many ingredients in a menopause product for general purposes, like this one. In addition to that, there's red clover, and I have red clover here. I've got the regular herb, but I also have capsules and a tincture. And just like the isoflavones, there are various products that contain red clover as one of its ingredients. So what you'll find is a lot of these products that are just marketed for menopause in general have these substances that I'm talking about right now. Next is licorice root. Look at licorice root. It is really a root. Look at it. It looks like a tree trunk, but you can find it in the form of capsules, the tincture, and even tea. So the key is all of these products come in a variety of forms. And the next estrogen containing herb is hops. Here I have it in the form of a tea. Hops is not easy to find. I don't have it in a whole bunch of different forms, but most people can find it somewhere. And most people also associate hops with beer, not with menopause or heart attacks. But you need to know that it has some benefits in our area of interest. Now, in contrast, when it comes to our next herb, we have it in just about every form possible. It's wild yam. Here it is as the actual herb, and look at it. It's just like bark off a tree. Here I have it in the form of a powder. 
Here is the tincture. Here are capsules. And here's a gel. Wild yam is everywhere. Although I warned you about something with regard to your wild yam, you will see it marketed as progesterone rather than estrogen. And you need to know that it contains estrogen. But everywhere you go, you will probably see wild yam marketed as progesterone. If it is marketed as progesterone, it started out as estrogen and they did something to turn it into progesterone. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I can't tell you how much any of these phytoestrogen herbs you need to reduce your risk for a heart attack. And that's because there are no studies to designate dosages for that purpose. But hey, knowing all your options is the key and every little thing helps a bit. So that is all the herbal options, options for lowering your risk of a heart attack. Basically, you have the Hawthorne and the phytoestrogen family. The phytoestrogen family is everything else other than the Hawthorne. It's not a whole lot, but as you can see, each category gives you a few more options. And if you use whatever you can from each category, the benefits really add up. But the most important thing for you to understand about herbal options for, for preventing a heart attack is this. There are essentially two categories of options for preventing a heart attack. Some you should use instead of others, and some you should use in addition to others. And the way in which you decide how to use each one depends on you. It all depends on how healthy your heart is in the first place. If your heart is healthy and your risk of heart attack is low, you may be able to use herbal options instead of other options. But if your heart is unhealthy, and you're at moderate or high risk for a heart attack, you should use herbal options in addition to other options. In other words, herbs are only strong enough to keep an already healthy heart healthy. If your doctor tells you that you're at high risk for a heart attack, or that your calculated score for a heart attack is high, or that you have a high coronary artery calcium score, Herbs are not a substitute for a cholesterol-lowering drug or for significant lifestyle changes. I guess you could say that herbs can't fix a broken heart. You would be in big trouble if you tried to use herbs in a situation like that. They are not strong enough to repair a heart that is unhealthy. I just don't want you to think that all options are equal and that you can just pick what you like best. So I always tell you the limitations of each option. That's where I will end today. And next week, we're going to discuss hormonal options for preventing a heart attack. You don't want to miss that one or the three that follow it. Go to menopausetaylor.me for consultations or for anything else for that matter. Be sure to subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll tell you goodbye for now.